Good evening, everybody. Matrix here. What's up? What's up? So here it is, the part two of my two-part series, um, the best of August Longs. Uh, the previous part, the uh, previous video, I showed you a few charts and a few trades that I took. Uh, they were all longs, and I said, uh, notice all the similarities. And uh, today, on the part two, I'm going to explain uh, why I took those trades and show you uh, the similarities of uh, this play that I look for on a day in day out basis. Okay, so basically we all know first of all it's long, right? Uh, let's get um, the mouse here real quick. Okay, and uh, what I want to start with is uh, somebody in my YouTube video comment uh, said something that is very true. All these trades happen after 10 o'clock. Now, I know AMD is not a really good example, so let's go to KSS for now first. Um, all these trades happen after 10 o'clock, and uh, the reason for that is uh, something I call, uh, or something in the industry we call price discovery, okay? So what price discovery is, is uh, let's say right here from uh, 10 o'clock to uh, from the open here at 9.30, Okay, so this little range right here, um, this is called the price discovery. It's when the stock opens up uh, within the first half an hour, a lot of emotions pile in. Uh, usually on these stocks um, that I trade, they uh, most of the time they have a very recent catalyst. So for example, KSS here had a recent catalyst. I believe they had like a earnings call or earnings reaction or something like that. Um, if not the day before, then from the morning or a couple days ago. So uh, that's a key criteria number one, right? Uh, I want a, a news catalyst, a fresh news catalyst that can um, evoke the investors and traders to take a look at this ticker and start making a trading decision. With that said, for example, uh, AMD had a fresh piece of news um, the a, a few days prior, if not, um, I I believe uh, on August first, uh, they had some fresh news. Um, KSS as well um, had some fresh news. Uh, Tyson Foods, I I remember this was an earnings play. Okay, um, Disney was an earnings play. It's not from uh, right the day before then a few days ago and then Roku probably had some upgrades throughout the month right um, uber this was a short play so I wasn't going to talk about it but nonetheless it had earnings as well uh, Netflix as well had earnings and then uh, Baba um, had earnings so basically all the stocks the one thing I look for or the first thing I look for is the stock needs to have a fresh news catalyst um, maybe a day old a few days old or it might go back to uh, as much as three to four days okay and then with that said once you have that catalyst um, the investors and uh, the traders they will look into it and cause a big move and then they will have to make a big decision now as traders for us uh, we don't have the ability to move the stocks all we do is basically try to ride the wave right and um, with the price discovery here at the open, the first half an hour, uh, all this action happens and it's really hard to catch a solid one directional move, okay? Um, this is the part where basically the market is trying to settle and find equilibrium within the stock price range on the day and then they pick a direction. So for example, over here, uh, KSS had a catalyst after uh, the open, you can see um, the price action was very sporadic. Now I'm not saying you can't be profitable trading here, but it's tough, right? I mean, one thing you're gonna be longing for a few minutes and then all of a sudden it tanked on you and you're gonna try to short, and then a few minutes later it's going back up. You don't know where it's going to go. Okay, so this play requires you to be nice and patient, relax, and wait. Okay, and wait until the price 
settle down and the market settles down. And that usually happens a little after 1030. Now, within the first half an hour, um, the stock I've noticed most or majority of the time, they will decide on a range. Okay. Uh, a range meaning like a, from the highest point to the lowest point on the day. Within the first half an hour, they will decide a range. So, for example, right here, KSS decided that it's going to range from here to here. Okay, we have the highs and lows. And from here, now we know what we're trying to do, right? Um, once we have the top and bottom, my goal is to pick the bottom of this day's range. And typically, the, the stock will trade within this range for the entire day. Um, very rarely, if the catalyst is very good, on um, either to the upside or the downside, if it's very good to the upside, if it's a fantastic positive catalyst, um, it could actually break out of this morning's range. But um, majority of the time, uh, my trade targets, these are the major targets I'll be looking at, the high and the low of the entire stays range. And my goal is to take a trade from either the bottom of this range and ride it all the way back to the top. Okay. And with that said, these moves are a little bit more um, slower paced, but that in itself will keep me and my emotions intact. And uh, that way I can hold the trade. And while I'm watching it work or not work, I can go through trade decisions in my head as I watch price action. Okay. So there's a... Um, that's a few key criteria that we have uh, for now. Uh, first of all, we have the catalyst. Second of all, um, all these trades happen after price discovery, which is after 10 o'clock when the stock has uh, decided on a price of equilibrium and started to pick a direction. Third, after price discovery, most of the time, uh, the stock sets up a pretty wide range for me to work from, okay? So how do I enter, right? That's the key key uh, point that we're trying to get into right now. So how do you enter this trade? Okay, so uh, let's go back to um, AMD first, okay? So AMD, if I remember correctly, you see this massive down move here, and it happened at around one o'clock. I believe, if I remember correctly, this was where Trump tweeted and uh, we had also a Fed speak that day, and um, Trump tweeted, and basically the the whole market pulled, okay, causing literally every single stock to pull. And uh, I was just so happy to be watching AMD that day, if uh, not the night before. And I was watching this come down, and basically I'm I'm looking for a bottom now. So as this bottom out. You see the stock set in um, some sort of a range here. So it has like a consolidation range, right? At the bottom right here. Okay. And then as I extend this line out, this action right here, this is basically a breakout of the range, right? Of this tiny little consolidation range. Okay, and then as the price comes down, it shows and held this breakout, proving that it has broken out. Okay, and then from here, we start to get higher lows and higher lows, right? And then also, uh, there's one thing I want to talk about is, let me clear these drawings again. Um, after a stock has bottomed out and we see that it has a consolidation range, right? And it has, this stock particularly has broken out of the range, uh, not once, but twice. These actually sets up for very, very tight risk. So as you can see, um, the stock over here on AMD, uh, this entry had a very tight risk, okay? I entered right here at the break of 29. It broke out of 29. It held that level. I had a very tight stop, 
right around this area, okay? And my reward was, uh, well, VWAP, the green line would be my first target, right? And then my second target, like I said, probably back up to here, right? So here's my risk to reward. These are at least three to one, if not more five to ones, right? Um, so I took the entry right here. I, I believe this was 29 and change. I took about 29.10 or so, risking 10, 20 cents. And then um, as you can see, we had very clear, concise uh, uh, support here below us. And the stock has basically proven not once, but twice that it's, uh, hold on, clear my drawings. Oh, not once, but twice that it has uh, bottomed out and starting to break out of consolidation ranges, right? So um, with that said, you are free to enter. And, um, and I hope this kind of explains it. Now coming out of here, uh, why did I uh, get out, right? So, uh, I got out at the at the pop because it was nearing the thirty dollar mark, which is a key psychological number. You always want to be uh, paying yourself. So if I draw a horizontal line across over here, you see how on this down move it dipped and held, and then came back down. So this horizontal line, this is where exactly I paid myself as it starts pushing. I paid myself some, and then it came up to here at the thirty dollar mark precisely. Okay, and I paid myself some more and I held some. Now, as it was coming, obviously I was targeting uh, this VWAP over here, but as it was coming up here, it could not break out of 30 and continue. So as it came right back down, I just uh, basically took it off and uh, that was it for the trade. Okay, so I hope you guys understood uh, what happened here on this trade. Now, let's take a look and find some similarities on the next few trades here. Um, AMD, so KSS, same thing. Here we have the price discovery. Uh, this is the open from here to uh, 10 o'clock from here. I waited. Okay, we have uh, also a range here of here to here, top to bottom. And then, as the stock came up, came down, it found some bottom, came up, came down, double bottom. This is a very technical chart pattern. Um, I could have gotten in right here, right, with very tight risk, but I waited as well. And then we see it making higher lows from the double bottom, higher lows, right? And when it came down, this was when I called okay, I got I to gotta take it because I've missed enough of this trade. I draw the horizontal line across right here and you might be thinking, why here? Why the support? Why is this support, right? So given the time that I had watching the stock, I see that the most amount of volume is done here at the open on dip, right? And then the stock came down, up and through, came down and held. You see this hold? Okay, down again, up and through, busted out from here, up and down, and then held one more time. How many times does it have to hold for me to say, okay, I got to get in, right? Um, we got the higher lows, uh, sorry, the first low, the higher low here, higher low here, higher low here, and another higher low, okay? Am I sure it was going to work? Definitely no, right? But as traders, we can only be thinking with a probability mindset, right? So from here, as it came down, I basically took it and risking uh, first probably here and then risking probably around here as well. Uh, a little bit w over 10, 15 cents, okay? Compared to my main target right here, if I draw a horizontal line across, this is about a dollar. So let's take a look at the price here. Uh, 49.40 versus 50.40. So 80 cents. And my risk was uh, 20 cents down. So this is a 41 trade. 
It's four to one trade. I took it and just waited. Okay. And then as it made yet a higher low again, uh, I added here. And as it was coming up, I peeled some here because this was a prior resistance, as you can see. Resistance, resistance, peeled some, came down, it hit up, key psychological mark of $50, took some off, and uh, I was basically done for the trade. That was it. Okay. Uh, don't need to be super greedy about it. It's only 20 cents away, right? $50 mark. If it was supposed to go, it's supposed to break out and go, right? But it didn't. So uh, that's how this trade went down. And uh, notice the similarities after 10 o'clock. Okay. Basing, basing, higher lows, higher lows, basing, key support. Um, we had an earnings catalyst. Okay. And uh, all the check marks in play. Next up, let's take a look at the next uh, chart here. Tyson Foods, same thing. Earnings callous. Stock came down. Where is my uh, 10 o'clock? There is my 10 o'clock right there. Okay, there's my open price discovery. Just wait, right? As it came down, look at this 10 o'clock right dead nuts that's where it bounced and it came down $82 key psychological whole number okay I marked this off during the trade as well key support it stopped at 82 at 10 o'clock so I was using 82 as reference I would stop out if it continued to fail and I basically bought it on the red candle right this was a probability trade right I mean there was no way I would have known it would have bounced there, but why did I take it? Simple, high probability of it getting back up at a key psychological whole number and support. I think if you scroll back down uh, on this daily chart uh, on um, August 5th on TSN, I believe uh, 82 was a key support area as well. So basically just take it and if it fails, it fails. You get out, right? There is no guarantee. As a trader with the mindset, uh, we are always thinking about probability. So it's it has a very high probability of bouncing back up. And my first target is VWAP. And then obviously my second target or my final target is the high of day. And eventually look at this. It came up to the VWAP. I pulled some and then it busted through. It topped out around here, okay, which is the opening. Okay, after the opening flush, it came back up and it held here. And then look where it stopped out. So this was a target as well. I could have paid myself here, but I held. And as it came down, I saw this little range break down. So I took some off. And then I saw a double bottom. I recognized that I took off a little too early. And then as it was making an other higher low from this range breakout, see how it's breaking out of this range right here, making higher lows, 83.50, key psychological number. I took the long again. I had tight risk and I got out right in this area. Okay, so um, the theme is you have tight risk, you have basing, you have a high risk to reward ratio. All my um, targets were set. All my uh, stop losses was set. And uh, yeah, so I hope you guys are seeing some of these uh, patterns here arise here. Um, Disney, okay. Uh, I talked about Disney saying, uh, let's take a look at this trait number three here, right? I said, uh, ignore the opening short. Okay, so this is not the trade I'm talking about here, but although it worked, but Disney, right, uh, I longed a little too early right here, and hence I basically stopped out. I believe I longed on this candle, yeah, and I stopped out here. And then when it held, uh, I got back in long again. I basically saw that the stock is holding this area. We have the double bottom and a higher low. Right, you see this higher low, 
this was a higher low. That's why I longed. I had clear risk, 133 right here, over under. All right, 133. And uh, basically, that was it, right? I mean, here is your opening price, which was the main target. And I came up, took some. As it came up, lo and behold, it failed, but it held the VWAP. So I held. And as it came back up here, paid myself, uh, came back up, busted through. It held, which showed me that the stock is still strong. It's still making higher lows from here. There's no reason to get out. As we come back up over here to this price target, I'm waiting to see if this breakout actually holds. And when it snapped down and didn't hold, I flattened out and got out. And as you can see, this is where the stock starts to reverse, right? So there is the pattern. Uh, wait for the opening price discovery. It had a catalyst. It had, I believe, earnings that day as well. So um, these trades typically trend one direction at least for over an hour and uh, perhaps sometimes even longer. Okay, so let's clear out drawings. Let's do the next chart. Um, Roku, look at this. Same thing, uh, 10 o'clock. Okay, so 10 o'clock was right here, right? Um, trade number two, I got long, came back out. Trade number three, after 10 o'clock, trade number three, got long. And you see here, uh, at the open, it based on a bottom and then higher low from the bottom. And as you see this higher low, very interesting where the higher low was made, right? Right there, okay? Um, and then another higher low. And then when I got in, I was basically, I believe I was risking this area right here at the 120. Okay, uh, this is August 8th. You can go back to the chart and look at it. My target right here at 123. Okay, the opening, here's the open, right? The opening highs is right here. The opening lows is right here. I got in this late, however, I mean, I could have gotten in here, I guess. Yeah, um, and uh, basically took it off as it was coming up. I peeled some. Uh, I peeled some over here because of this, right? This little resistance right here, right? So I peeled some, and then uh, once it got to the day's highs or the opening highs, I took some off, took some off, and that was the trade. Okay, so same exact pattern. Um, how many trades is that right now? That's the same pattern. Uh, Uber was a short, Netflix was a short, Baba. Okay, Baba, this is the one that I failed on. Uh, let's take a look here at 10 o'clock, right here. Now, I'm not saying this trade works every single time, but as you can see, the probability and the success rate of this trade is good, right? Excuse me. Okay, so 10 o'clock, Baba sold off. It made a day's low. Okay, it made a day's highs, which is the open right here, 170.50. And then, so this is where I bought, right? I saw it bottomed out, but however, I got in too early, sold half, and this faked me out after 10 o'clock. When it came down, then it held, right? This was telling me, okay, it's a double bottom from here. So I bought some again and I held through and it couldn't break out, right? So uh, I got wicked out here, I got stopped out. Uh, this wick was very, very harsh for me. Um, and then uh, I believe I was sizing and yeah, started size. So I just got wicked out, which was fine. And then it was riding again. So I got in right here on higher lows. And it was supposed to, if this had worked, it was supposed to broke out of this and continue on, but it didn't. So I could have gotten out uh, a little earlier, but um, I held through and I tried three times and it failed. Okay, so that was uh, Bubba. Uh, let's take a look at the next chart here. NVDA, Uber. Was this a long? Yes, NVDA long. Let's take a look. 10 o'clock, where am I? Right here. 
Oh, interesting. NVDA, this happened a little before 10 o'clock. Okay, this was the open here. And uh, I was short, but however, I mean, as you can see, the same pattern arise, right? Uh, we have the opening highs and opening lows, and then we have the first higher low from there. And then I was short the stock. So once I saw this, I, I, I flattened out. As you can see, I flattened out from my short. And then it started to make a little range right here. And I recognize this pattern. I recognize that the opening high and lows is in. I recognize that it's uh, holding a higher low. And uh, I recognize that this, we have this little range here and it tested, okay? So this little test right here, which held this range, got me to long right here. That's where I longed, and basically I wrote it up for my target, and then peeled somewhere off right here. And uh, as it came back down and snapped this this range here, I got out. But that was the pattern, right? You see the higher lows, higher lows, and then holding of the range and the higher low again. Basically, early open morning reversal happened a little bit after ten. Uh, sorry, before ten, but it worked out. And uh, yep. Uh, next chart, finally, oh, Dell, this was beautiful. Um, earnings reaction, as you can see, uh, at the open, it held a pre-market high. And uh, this is after hours high, and in pre-market, it held, it ran. Uh, what was 10 o'clock? 10 o'clock was right about here, right? So I waited. Uh, obviously, I missed this move. Missed the opening move here. And then this is a five minute chart. As you can see, it uh, started to bottom out and I waited a long time. Uh, I actually tried to take some right here as it was coming down, but it snapped right through. So I just took it off real quick and then it started bouncing and I just waited for it and it bounced, it bounced. Right over here is when uh, I got in. I'm like, okay, this thing is trying to sell off, but uh, it came late at one o'clock, right? When it finally found bottom. At the end of the day, this was a uh, positive earnings catalyst. And the night before, I talked about on the watch list to watch forty-nine fifty and the fifty-dollar mark to hold. Okay, lo and behold, this is actually where I got in, right? So I saw it bounce off forty-nine fifty, made a higher low from here, and the sideways consolidation. This was twenty minutes of consolidation right here. This is a five minute chart and I just got in on the higher low. And I just got in on the higher low right here with a very tight risk, right? I had risk right here and right here. So my risk was very tight. Basically just took the trade, went to lunch. And by the time I came back, it already got to VWAP and I was all out. One trade just held it all day. And uh, my target was here and here and the VWAP obviously. And that was the trade. So uh, this was, uh, I made a dollar off this and I had 20 cents risk. This was a five to one. But uh, that's basically the gist of it. So uh, any other trades, I believe that would be it. Yeah, that would be it. Okay, so um, hopefully this kind of helps out, uh, helps you guys um, uh, think about uh, this, this trading pattern, this edge play here, this long play. I'm going to type out some some notes here. Um, let me get the color out here. Okay, so uh, one, we have uh, Catalyst. Does it work? No? Oh, I'm using white. That's why. Okay. So uh, one. Uh, the stock needs a catalyst that that would uh, make the stock to trend nice um, on the day. That's the type I'm looking for. Uh, two, I'm waiting for um, after price discovery. Okay. And then uh, three, you need to look for um, bottom, bottoming consolidation 
ranges, okay? That would confirm uh, the stock bottoming out. And then four, get in on higher lows with height risk, right? And then five, your targets should be our uh, VWAPs, um, opening high, uh, and key resistance. Okay. So basically that's it. That's the trade. I hope you guys enjoyed what you watch. Uh, in the comment section, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe. Uh, let me know what you think. And um, I'll see you guys all bright and early tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Ciao.